Hi everybody, Marco Carvalho here from businesscreditblogger.com. Today's video, we're gonna talk about how to get maximum funding for your small business. By the end of this video, we're gonna share with you a very powerful strategy that we implement for our clients in three stages about how you can get the most funding possible, whether you're a startup, existing business, or even a real estate investor. So if you're looking for what does it take to get the most amount of money in the shortest period of time, I'm talking about 14 to 20 days is our funding process, then this video is for you. So let's get started. Uh, first and foremost, <clears throat> why is cash and credit the key for you? Well, whether you're a business owner, you're in the startup phase, or you're a real estate investor, obviously access to cash and credit allows you to do a lot of things. You'll see on this list here, uh, working capital allows you to start your business. So if you outline how much funds you need to acquire new equipment, you're gonna have that access to capital or even cash in the bank readily available. <clears throat> Where people make a mistake of just having credit is to realize that having lump sums of cash in your checking account also helps with your bank rating. It also is very easy for certain types of projects to fund that need cash, especially if you're a real estate investor as well and you also need a lump sum of cash for a down payment on an investment property, that's why it's important to have liquid cash available in your account. And credit allows you to have that purchasing power. It allows you to purchase products and services for your business. It's revolving credit. So you'll see in this list here that you have having access to both types of funding during the early stages or even the ending stages of your business, whether you're already seasoned business, is very important. At the bottom of this presentation, you'll see businesscreditbuilders.org forward slash pre-qualification. That's where you want to go to get pre-qualified for our maximum business funding program. And our maximum business funding program goes through three stages of funding for you. So at the end of the funding stage, you have maximum amount of capital and credit available to you. So the first and most important thing before you go get pre-qualified, before you want to acquire credit, uh, what you want to know is how much funding do you actually really need? So this is important because <clears throat> simply getting funding for your business <clears throat> and not having a, a plan for how to put that money to work is going to hurt you. You want to know uh, what's your return on investment going to be. Because the key here is putting your money or credit to work on behalf of your business. You want to leverage that money to turn a profit, to generate more revenue for you, to generate more sales, to expand your business, to maybe invest in more property so you have more additional income coming in. So how much is it gonna increase your sales if you have access to, to let's say an additional 50,000 or 100,000 in capital? What are you gonna do with that money for your business? How are you gonna scale your business? How are you gonna grow your business? More importantly, when you scale and grow it, what is gonna be the return? How, many, how much increased sales are you projecting? Okay, also let's say you're a real estate investor. How many um, investment deals are you turning away right now that you're losing money on because you cannot invest because you don't have the capital? So when you do have the capital, now how many more deals can you produce every single month or excuse me, every single year as well? So you gotta calculate those type of numbers so you know, okay, I, once I receive this funding, this is how I'm gonna put it to work. Uh, so how much more production, efficiency, and money will you save? That's another thing to factor in is how much money will you save when you have additional capital? Let's say you have to hire some more employees, uh, which will make your operation more efficient. Uh, how much money are you turning away right now because you don't have enough capital? I have uh, clients call uh, all the time because they have to turn down purchase orders because they cannot fulfill the orders. They don't have the money to uh, generate the product, uh, purchase the materials needed. So if you have access to capital, you can fulfill those purchase orders. Uh, now, the key is putting your cash and credit to work. So that's so important, because if you have a lump sum of money or access to lots of capital and, cr and credit for the business and it's just sitting there not doing anything, then obviously, you know, some people, you don't want to search for funding or go through this funding program unless you have a plan to put the money to work. Uh, the thing is, what do you actually qualify for? This is a real hard pill to swallow with a lot of people that uh, we talk to is because they you may want a certain type of credit or a certain type of funding product uh, but what the key is what do you actually qualify for i like to use this analogy like you walk into a dealership and you see a mercedes-benz and then you see maybe a taurus um, not to take away from either one of those vehicles are great cars but let's say you want that mercedes-benz you want all fully loaded you want everything on there 
and then uh, they you fill out the app to qualify for a loan or a lease on the Mercedes, and then you don't qualify. But the the salesman says, well, you do qualify for this Ford Taurus over here. Well, even though you wanted the Mercedes, <laughs> you have to go with the Ford Taurus because that's what you actually qualify for. That's what you the the requirements you meet. So I want you to kind of take a real assessment on what can you actually get, what type of funding. So the first thing to ask yourself is your personal credit scores. Are they in the 680 or higher range? Okay, your personal credit scores, let's say you're in the 650 range or 660, uh, you're, you may have to start rebuilding your credit, make some adjustments and find out why your scores have dropped. You want to get those scores up because your credit scores are just a benchmark indicator. So you want to be in the 680 or higher score range. Now, if you're at 670, 675, and 680, let's say with all three bureaus, that's fine too. That's close enough. Uh, but remember, that's the minimum requirement for this type of funding. How much personal income do you earn on a yearly basis? Because credit inc income are so important. I'll get into uh, income here in detail in a second. But uh, how much income do you earn on a yearly basis? That's important because we're going to ask you that. And what type of income do you earn? Is it a W-2 income? Do you get pay stubs? Are you self-employed? Uh, are you 1099? Is it retirement income? Is it rental income that you get from properties? Make sure you have all that information readily available so when you're asked what's your income, you know exactly what your personal income is. Uh, also, are you a startup or an existing business? This is going to play a big role. If you're a startup business, then obviously the business has no revenues. So banks and lenders are going to look to you as the owner, being the owner of the startup. Is they're going to look at your credit worthiness. They're going to look at your income to support the new startup's uh, 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 funding. Makes sense, right? Now let's say you're an existing business. <clears throat> If you're an existing business, what is your annual revenue? What are you doing on a yearly basis in revenue? What did you do in 2017? Most importantly is what was your net profit for 2017 of income? That's the key. You can be generating a lot of gross income, but the key that banks and lenders look at is your net income because a net income is the money that's left over after the business pays all of its expenses. So if you're, if you're at a loss, then your business has no additional funding to support a line of credit or a loan. Uh, let's say your net income is very small, then you cannot expect to get a $100,000 line of credit or a loan for the in the business's name if the business tax returns show that the business is only netting, let's say, $5,000 a year or $10,000 a year. That's all that's left over. Even if it's generating a million dollars in revenue and your net income is only $10,000, that means you have nine uh, over nine hundred thousand or more nine hundred ninety thousand dollars in expenses. <clears throat> so keep that in perspective. If your business income doesn't have a strong net income on the tax returns, then the banks and lenders are going to look to you as the guarantor, as the individual, on what income do you have to support a loan or a line of credit. Now, let's talk about personal credit. What do they actually look for when you supply us a tri merge credit report? What do our underwriters look for? Uh, when we gauge a funding approval, a funding projection. The first thing they look at is your personal credit scores. Are you in the 680 or higher range? If you have a 740 or 730, that those are great scores, but that's not the only thing that factors uh, why uh, you can get a higher projection. Because remember, we have people who have 730 scores who have maybe a low projection or even get turned down because of other factors on their credit report. The credit scores are just an indicator. It's just a benchmark. The second thing to look for is your payment history. How long of a payment history do you have? If you only have one year of payment history on your credit, you have a very, very thin file. So you may get a little bit of credit, but not a whole lot through this program. Whereas if you have five or 10 years of credit history, there's a lot to look at. So payment history and do you have late payments? Those are all things. And how recent were your late payments? Were they a couple of years ago? Or did you have a late payment just three months ago? That pays a factor. Another thing, <clears throat> primary account holders. This is really important because underwriters look at your primary accounts. They don't. They, they know what an authorized user account is. And so if you have you know three authorized user accounts with you know twenty thirty thousand dollar credit limits, they know those aren't your accounts. You're just added as an authorized user. They want to look at. They look at your primary accounts. Which one accounts do you have in your name? Okay, so you don't want to have 
a lot of authorized user accounts where they outweigh the strength of your own primary account. Authorized user accounts are okay, they help you boost your scores up, but when it comes to underwriters, they know what authorized user accounts are. Your primary accounts are what's important. Types of credit. They wanna look at the types of credit you have on your personal credit report. Do you have credit cards? Do you have a loan? Do you have a mortgage? Do you have an auto? <clears throat> Having a mortgage is, is a very powerful thing because they know you're a homeowner. Uh, if you have an auto loan, great. Uh, if you don't, if you, the credit card is another important thing that you gotta have on your report. Now, they look at the size of the credit limits that you currently have on your revolving credit cards, okay, or even on your loans. So if your highest credit card limit is uh, $2,500, that's a big, a very big difference than someone whose highest credit limit has is 20,000. Okay, so you gotta understand, they look at those factors is how much current credit is currently extended to you right now? How much can you handle as an individual? So let's say if your credit limits are five, $10,000 credit limits, that's good. Uh, whereas if you only have a $500 credit limit, a couple of those, then it's highly unlikely you're gonna pre-qualify for <clears throat> maximum funding. They look at your credit utilization on your revolving credit card accounts. So uh, they look at your individual utilization and your overall utilization. So you wanna be under 50%. You don't want, <clears throat> excuse me, you don't want to be maxed out on your credit cards uh, when you apply, pre-qualify for funding. If you're at 60 or 70%, that's okay, but uh, they look at your overall credit utilization and individual credit utilization. <clears throat> now, I want to suggest you go pay down your cards. Uh, let us do a review and we'll tell you if you need to do some pay downs to qualify for funding. The last thing they look at is inquiries. <clears throat> don't shop around for credit or go through other funding uh, rounds with someone else and then expect to qualify for funding with us, okay? Because it shows up on your credit as inquiry. So that's the one thing that can kill your opportunity to get maximum funding through our program is if you incur uh, inquiries in the past 30, 60, 90 days, uh, we see a lot of new accounts open, you're not going to be able to get more funding. So, you know, that's where you want to be very careful <clears throat> with applying for credit. Now let's go, what do underwriters look at for your personal and your business income? Now, as far as personal income goes, they look at W-2s, 1099s, retirement income. So can you produce those documents? If you can't produce those documents, if you have no way to document your income, then you have to go stated income. And that narrows down your funding programs to just you know credit cards, personal and business credit cards. That's the difference. <clears throat> if you can verify income, then you can get a lot more funding, <clears throat> excuse me. On your rental income, you have to provide bank statements. So this is just once you go through funding, it's not through pre-qualification, uh, you have to provide those documents. Business annual revenues. If you have a business, you have to support, uh, provide tax returns to us <clears throat> to show the net income for the business. Uh, now, as far as uh, funding goes, make sure you prepare, prepare to plan to provide those tax returns. We have a lot of people come to us looking for funding. They want a business line of credit, uh, and they, they say they have great uh, cash, or they have great revenues for the business. They have good net income. Then when we ask them, do you have your tax returns done? No, we haven't filed our tax returns. Well, then you cannot prove income. Uh, so you know you have to go state it if you can't prove income. So that's important is you have to, your tax returns for the business show everything. They show your gross, your net, your deductions. Those are things you're gonna have to provide unless you wanna go stated income. If you wanna just go personal, uh, then you need W-2, pay stubs, uh, or you can even provide bank statements for rental income. Okay, so if you can't remember this, if you can't prove income, then you must go stated income. That's the bottom line. Uh, so uh, there are credit-based products like we have, like our business credit card funding program, which is stated income. What is stated income? Stated income mean, means basically is you don't have to provide documentation of your income. You don't have to provide tax returns, no financials, no W-2s or pay stubs. You're stating your income on the application. Uh, so that would be your only option if you can't prove income, but it limits your ability to get funding as far as you can't get lines of bank lines of credit or loans you can only resort to credit card funding <clears throat> now how do you get maximum funding through our program well what our strategy is is it's accomplished in three stages over a 14 to 20 day period typically it may be a little longer than that depending on how quick you are on, on providing the documentation to our processors but each stage that we go through with you is designed to provide you as much unsecured funding as possible.
Remember, unsecured. You don't have to provide collateral. You don't have to provide any assets to get this type of funding. So at the end of the funding process, uh, what you're gonna have are three major sources of income for you to grow your business or and or invest in real estate. First, you're gonna have some cash. You're gonna have cash in the bank, a lot of it, uh, which is great, depending on what you qualify for, obviously. You're gonna have bank lines of credit. Bank lines of credit are an excellent source of, of access to credit because you can write checks to draw on your line of credit. You can transfer funds to your checking account. Uh, the re and the third uh, type of uh, funding strategy you're gonna receive is revolving lines of credit in the form of credit cards. This is business credit cards and or personal credit cards if you really wanna max your funding at, during that these three stages. Now, let's talk about stage number one. Stage number one is installment cash loans. What we do when you uh, send in your agreement to us, we, we sign you a processor and then we present you to the banks. Uh, and then you'll receive a one to three cash loans. And these are offers that are presented to you as a client. You can accept or reject these offers. Uh, so we, it's not mandatory that you accept a cash loan, but this is where you wanna be open to accepting as much cash as possible because the terms and the rates are excellent. Uh, you're gonna receive one to three cash loans are combined as 25 to 300,000 in cash loans. We have banks that go up to 100,000 in loans. Uh, you're, uh, interest rates are going to range from 6 to 15% and the repayment terms range from 2 to 7 years on uh, our cash loans. So once you have a big lump sum of cash deposit in your bank, depending on how many cash loans you've accepted, then we move on to round number 2. This is stage 2 of funding. This is where we present you and set you up with actual bank lines of credit. We're handling all the applications on your behalf. Uh, and this is one to three bank lines of credit that we receive. Banks typically issue anywhere from thirty to 50000 in lines of credit. They don't go higher than that. And remember, this is unsecured. You don't have to provide collateral for this. And the interest rates with this is 7 to 12%. Uh, the, the minimum monthly payment when you draw on your line of credit is going to be about 2 to 5% of your outstanding balance. But this is revolving lines of credit. You can draw on your bank lines of credit using either a convenience check or you can transfer into your money into your business checking account. This is great for you if you need a lump sum of cash or especially for real estate investors if you're looking for, let's say you need a $20,000 down payment for a house and let's say you have a $50,000 line of credit, you can simply stroke a check, that $20,000 is gonna be in your account. Uh, and then your minimum monthly payment is only 2 to 5% on that uh, 20000 you just drew. And let's say you have a 7% interest rate uh, with that particular bank. Uh, so that gives you a lot of flexibility when you have access to that type of funding vehicles at your disposal. Now, stage number three is revolving lines of credit. Uh, this is where we set you up with personal and or business credit cards. Uh, so you'll receive about three to five cards. Uh, let's say we strictly go business credit cards for you. Uh, the business credit cards only report to the business credit reporting agency. So this gives you, the business owner, the ability to build your business credit, uh, establish your identity, have access to working capital through uh, what I call purchasing power. Uh, now the combined credit limits with the cards are range from uh, fifteen to one hundred fifty thousand. Uh, typically, though, you're gonna, as far as the range of credit limits we've seen, it ranges anywhere from forty to ninety thousand exceptional when you get up to higher than that and we we have seen cases like that but it's it's the mainly you're looking at anywhere from 50 to 100,000 in credit limits uh, provided that you have really strong personal credit you have zero percent intro APR on these cards for six to 15 months depending on the bank and your annual interest rates after the intro APR period is over is 9.9 .9 to 19.9 percent <clears throat> one thing I want to talk about though with regards to the annual interest rates on credit cards is if you utilize the balance transfer strategy, which we talked about on one of our recent videos, is you don't have to ever worry about the annual interest rate because you could simply balance transfer to other cards because banks uh, will always offer you those 0% balance transfer offers. I get those all the time. They send me checks in the mail and say 0% for 18 months, 0% for, for 15 months, 0% if you transfer your balance, transfer your balance. So. Uh, banks are they want your debt that's why and they're hoping that you'll draw out that debt and then eventually pay interest but if you continuously balance transfer there's about a one to three balance transfer fee you can end up never paying interest on your credit card debt so you have to be smart with that approach definitely check out uh, the balance transfer strategy video I did just recently uh, for more information so those are your three stages of funding 
And you can see how powerful this is because you have cash, then you have a bank lines of credit, and then you have credit cards. So you have three major sources of funding available to you as a business owner and or real estate investor. Okay, so how do you pre-qualify for this? If you wanna get maximum funding, you wanna go through these three stages of funding with us. It's, it's over the 14 to 20 day period. Uh, you order first your tri-merge credit report. <clears throat> now, if you don't know what a tri-merge credit report is, it's basically your TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian report all blended into one credit report that also shows all three of your credit scores. That allows us to, to do the most thorough assessment and analysis of your personal credit report. If you have another tri-merge report, uh, you, can, uh, you can provide that. That's fine as long as it's not older than three weeks old. Um, but we suggest businessfundingengine.procredit.com. It costs you a dollar to get your tri-merge report. Um, you do sign up for their subscription service. It's a great service. I highly recommend it. Um, but you don't have to have it if you don't need it. Uh, step number two is you download your report through your dashboard. So once you sign up for the businessfundingengine.procredit report, you can log in and then download the report. Make sure you select the PDF option, not the HTML. Download it in PDF, save it on your computer. And then you're gonna go step three is you go to our pre-qualification form, which is businesscreditbuilders.org forward slash pre-qualification. Fill that information out, be as accurate as possible. We wanna ask about your income, what type of income you have, uh, also how much funding you need, make sure you put the right amount in there. Uh, and then when you submit that, you'll get a email confirmation that your report's under review. And it'll take us about 24 to 48 hours and we'll contact you via the phone to go over the funding projections, answer any questions you may have, and then send you out the agreement to move forward with funding. And then once you submit your agreement back to us, uh, we then assign you a processor and then we start the funding process. So that's really the three stages of funding to get maximum funding for your small business. So if you're looking uh, for more details, more information, check us out at businesscreditblogger.com. Be sure to click the thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and click the subscribe button because we're always sharing information on funding strategies, how to maximize your funding and business credit uh, for your startup, existing business, or real estate investment business. With that, make it a great day. We'll talk to you real soon.